How bad is business in the city now? Let's take a look at shopping malls in Shanghai. There is basically no one in this huge mall. The only people here are salespeople. This photo of a Shanghai shopping mall was taken by a delivery boy. No one is out spending money. As you can see, not only is there no one in the mall, many products are on sale and we don't know where the store clerks are. Clothing and shoe shops also had no customers. The netizens who took the video of these consumers are just not spending. Now no one even buys women's clothing, which means that the female consumer base is disappearing. That means the male consumer base is even smaller. This is a chain brand store, empty. Even restaurants now only have some scattered takeout orders. There are also some shops that have been put up for rent, hoping to recover funds and reduce losses. Shanghai's retail scene is experiencing a downturn. Footage from the CCF Shanghai International Daily Necessity Spring Fair reveals a lack of attendees and consumer activity. Even the once bustling 818 Plaza on Nanjing West Road is now desolate, with shops on the ground floor abandoned. This plaza's emptiness is surprising, given its location near the bustling Miaoming North Road pedestrian street and opposite the famous Wang Jiasha. Hengqi Automobile's flagship showroom used to occupy this space. Some Hengqi logos are still on the walls. Hengqi is an electric vehicle brand under the Evergrande Group. Evergrande chairman Xu Jiayin had high hopes for it. However, due to Evergrande's debt issues and delays in Hengqi's mass production, the market outlook is bleak. Questions arise as to why such a prime location remains unoccupied. Moreover, all shops on the second and third floor of the mall are also shuttered. The fourth floor, too, mostly sits vacant, with only a hair salon in operation. On a Thursday afternoon, salon employees are seen idling in front of the store. The closure of Shanghai's department stores has sparked concerns about economic decline in the Chinese metropolis. On February 5, 2024, Shanghai's classic department store, Shanghai 600, established in 1952, announced its closure. Netizens lament the changes in Shanghai's retail landscape. Shanghai 600 is closing, Pacific Department Store is already shuttered, and Plaza 66 and Oriental Department Store aren't what they used to be. After the pandemic, many shops have noticeably ceased operations, and the nostalgic bustle of historic Xu Jiahui is no more. Reports suggest that Shanghai 600's employees are being prepared for dismissal, as the owner and managers have disappeared after issuing the final severance payments to staff. Additionally, Giordano Ladies, a mid- to high-end women's clothing brand under the Hong Kong Fashion Group, announced the official closure of its store at Shanghai Ganghui Plaza on March 26. Giordano Ladies was the group's only mid- to high-end brand. The store opened in January 2014 and operated for a decade, undergoing several relocations during this period. Shanghai's economy has failed to recover due to the withdrawal of foreign investment. According to a report by the Financial Times, China, especially Shanghai, is no longer attractive to foreign businesses. This is because of the zero-COVID policy and the impact of laws like the anti-espionage law. Many foreign businesses have left. A recent survey by the American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai, which has 325 member companies, shows that only 52% of them are optimistic about their business prospects in China over the next five years. This marks the lowest level of optimism since the survey began in 1999. The report highlights that despite expectations of 2023 being a year of rebound in investor confidence and optimism, the reality has been quite the opposite. Business sentiment continues to deteriorate, and both domestic and foreign companies are re-evaluating the Chinese market. The downturn in the department store industry is not limited to Shanghai. The Contemporary Mall in Beijing closed its doors at the end of December 2023 after 28 years of operation. The mall, opened in 1995, was located at 40 Zhongguanchun Street in the Haidian District, with a prime location near several universities and the Zhongguanchun Business District. However, facing market pressures due to changing consumer demands, the old department store decided to renovate. Recently, department stores in China have been in a downturn. Influenced by economic conditions and changes in consumer habits, people are increasingly inclined to purchase luxury goods overseas, and online shopping is becoming mainstream. Not only is Japanese department store Isatan in Meilong Town closing down, but many well-known department stores are also choosing to exit the market. 
On March 31st, Shanning Yingtai Department Store, owned by the Alibaba Group, announced the official closure of its store. Look, Yingtai has begun to close. A long time ago, I planned to open a fitness gym here in Yingtai. Later, I found out that this place was about to close, so I avoided this pitfall. We can look at the surrounding KFC, Luckin Coffee, and Huawei, all of which have just been renovated. As entrepreneurs, we encounter this situation just after the renovation, which is particularly frustrating. The closure of department stores is not a sudden decision, but rather the result of long-term planning. In this situation, not informing businesses or potential tenants in advance is highly unethical. Hangzhou also closed a department store. On December 1st, 2023, Hangzhou Jiebai Xin Yuanhua Department Store, Building C, stopped operations after its lease expired. This was the first old-fashioned department store in Hangzhou, and also the city's earliest state-owned department store. It has operated for over 15 years, but recently foot traffic has declined. The mall has struggled to attract top international brands, worsened by the pandemic. This has led to a decline in quality brands, leaving consumers unable to find their favorite restaurants. Consequently, some store owners have seen their sales decrease significantly, almost turning the mall into a flea market. Video footage shows that Xin Yuanhua department store has been quite desolate for a long time. The crisis is not limited to department stores in major cities. Even in second- and third-tier small cities, the situation is not optimistic. On April 2nd, in Xiantao, Hubei province, the local well-known chain supermarket, Fudi Supermarket, went bankrupt and defaulted. It is reported that many residents still held Fudi Supermarket shopping cards in March, so they all rushed to redeem them. On that afternoon, the municipal government canceled the Qingming Festival, and told citizens not to use shopping cards at Foodie Market. Hubei Foodie Industry Company Limited owns chain supermarkets with more than 5,000 employees. It has six branch companies in Jingzhou, Xiantao, Tianmen, and Jianli, as well as two subsidiaries, Hubei Di Sijia Food Company Limited and Xiantao Foodie Fresh Marketing Company. By the end of 2007, the chain supermarkets had expanded to more than 400, with a storage and business area of 260,000 square meters, making it the largest rural chain supermarket operator in the Jianghan Plain. Foodie supermarket's closure is seen to reflect the weakness of rural economies. Previously, Foodie had one to three stores in almost every township in Xiantao, making it the undisputed retail king in small towns. Now, with e-commerce, live streaming, and group buying, coupled with overall economic decline, bankruptcy is inevitable. In 2024, a new wave of supermarket closures has arrived, especially traditional large-scale markets. This phenomenon highlights the severe challenges facing the supermarket industry, a poor economic environment leading to a decrease in consumer spending, an increase in new entrants exacerbating competition, and traditional stores struggling to meet consumers' constantly changing needs. The pandemic has hurt the retail industry in China, leading to the closure of many long-standing department stores. In 2022 alone, over 40 department stores announced closure, including 27 well-established ones with over 10 years of history. In 2023, more than 20 department stores in China closed due to lease expirations, poor management, or strategic adjustments. As of now, in 2024, 10 old department stores have announced closure, with five completely shutting down and another five undergoing upgrades or complete redevelopment. Department stores are mostly closing due to expiring leases and immense operational pressures. E-commerce platforms are also a major challenge. According to a 2024 report by China's Central Enterprise, CICC, 86.3% of department stores believe that insufficient consumer spending power is the primary challenge. About 70% of department store operators have reported that foot traffic has not recovered to pre-pandemic levels. Although overall sales increased by 8.8% year-on-year in 2023, the report points out that this is mainly due to the low base period in 2022 because of the pandemic. With high unemployment and low pay, how can people spend? Data from CICC for 2022 shows that there were 5.5 million people with no monthly income. There were 215 million people with monthly incomes under 500 yuan. 
There were 202 million people with monthly incomes between 500 and 800 yuan. There were 124 million people with monthly incomes between 800 and 1,000 yuan. This data confirms the statement by former Premier Li Keqiang that about 600 million people in China have a monthly average income of only 1,000 yuan. Furthermore, there are three higher income levels. 63.3 million people with monthly incomes between 5,000 and 10,000 yuan. 7.8 million people with monthly incomes between 10,000 and 20,000 yuan and 7 million people with monthly incomes exceeding 20,000 yuan. Overall, people with monthly incomes below 5,000 yuan account for nearly 95% of the total population. In addition, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, the per capita disposable income of residents in 2022 was 36,883 yuan, with the wage income of 20,590 yuan. The average annual wage for public employees in urban areas was 8,903 yuan, and for private employees in urban areas, it was 5,233 yuan. Economist Cheng Xiaonong said on April 4th that China's middle class is gradually disappearing and getting poorer. The wealthy are also shrinking. According to Who Run Rich List, the number of entrepreneurs globally, the wealth of 1 billion US dollars, decreased from 814 last year to 659 this year. The total wealth of affluent families also decreased by 3.6%. The middle class is trying to make ends meet while burdened with mortgage payments. People say that the middle class will become the new poor. Cheng Xiaonong's research shows that in fact, China's middle class is very small, only one-tenth compared to Taiwan's, and each middle class family in China carries a debt of 2 million yuan. Cheng Xiaonong also pointed out that 84% of people in China are in poverty. The remaining 16% are considered the richest group in China, but about 150 million of them have an average annual income lower than Taiwan's minimum wage, roughly between 3,000 and 5,000 yuan. Not only is income not ideal, but it's also harder for people in China to make a living. According to Chinese media Workers Daily, by the end of 2023, China's gig worker population had reached 200 million, accounting for 14.3% of the total employed population nationwide. Moreover, the demand for flexible employment continues to grow at a rate of 8% annually. Flexible employment refers to various forms of employment that differ from traditional full-time employment with stable companies and workplaces, such as part-time jobs, freelancing, individual businesses, and labor dispatch. Flexible jobs are mainly concentrated in the delivery and ride-hailing industries. U.S.-based economist Li Hengqing believes that the rapid expansion of China's flexible employment market exposes a huge unemployment problem because the so-called flexible employment is a form of unemployment. What people are most concerned about is how gig workers' labor rights and interests can be protected. Although China has relevant laws protecting labor rights, enforcement is very weak. Another important issue is social security, including medical insurance and retirement. China's social security and medical insurance systems are facing problems that the government isn't ready to handle. The lack of protection for labor rights and interests is fundamentally an institutional problem. Since Chinese policies do not allow for independent trade unions, although civil society organizations attempt to protect labor rights, they are not seen by the government as a national interest. At the same time, the Chinese government faces tremendous financial pressure, leading to an imperfect basic welfare system. Shifting the cost of labor rights to employers does not solve the problem. Instead, it may lead to a wave of business bankruptcies. Faced with an increasingly bleak economic situation, Beijing authorities recently introduced a series of measures to stimulate the economy. On April 3rd, the People's Bank of China stated that it would implement a prudent monetary policy, strengthen counter-cyclical adjustments, and focus on expanding domestic demand to boost confidence. It also recently issued a statement saying it would support banks in replenishing capital and guide financial institutions to increase medium and short-term loans to the manufacturing industry. Commentator Zheng Xu Guang suggests that the People's Bank of China's policies are not directly helping the public through fiscal or tax adjustments to income distribution. Instead, they're providing loans through banks, mainly to support manufacturing and boost domestic demand. This might result in a cycle of borrowing new loans to repay old ones, including personal or family loans. 
He pointed out that the role of the People's Bank of China is mainly to alleviate the pressure on all debtors through inflation. China is currently facing inflation, but due to sluggish domestic demand and overcapacity, a phenomenon known as deflation has emerged. This deflation is actually caused by massive injection of liquidity. Although falling prices may seem like a good thing for purchasing power, deflation poses a threat to the economy because consumers tend to postpone purchases in hopes of further price reductions. Due to insufficient demand, companies are forced to reduce production and agree to new discounts to sell off inventory. In addition to consumption, China's economic activities are also affected by the real estate crisis, high unemployment rates among young people, and the global economic slowdown. All of which affect demand for Chinese goods and thus factory operations. Commentator Yue Shan pointed out that China's economy is facing an unprecedented crisis, yet the top echelons of the Chinese Communist Party continue to make blind moves both domestically and internationally. The CCP has always covered up scandals, brainwashed and deceived, maintained order with a heavy hand, and relied on other countries to sustain its existence. Experts believe the situation is not sustainable, and societal upheavals may soon take place in China.